This is Y News with Angelo Castro III, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. Authorities still prohibit civilian entry to barangays Malag Malagakit and Simsiman in Pinkawayan, North Cotabato. Ray Pelayo explains why. Pinkawayan, North Cotabato is now under military control after it was attacked by members of the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters or BIFF yesterday. The military continues to conduct rearing operations and civilians are still barred to enter the area due to improvised explosive devices planted by the BIFF. Wala na. Kasi uh, kasi tuloy-tuloy yung gearing operation ng ating uh, C9 at mga trupa doon kasi may reported nga na uh, may uh, EOD na uh, iniiwan yung uh, BIFF kaya, mm -hmm. kaya po hindi natin basta-basta pinayagan yung ating mga civilian uh, pumasok agad doon sa area. More than 1,300 residents of Pigkawayan are temporarily taking shelter at the Pigkawayan National High School. Authorities clarify there had been no hostage taking in the attack, but only trapped individuals. Ngayon, kasi uh, nakausap natin yung, ano, yung uh, mga civilian, klarong-klarong mm -hmm. po na natrap lang sila doon sa eskwilahan. No? Nagkataon lang din na uh, yung, uh, yung mga civilian, nung pagputukan, ay kumakbo sila doon sa eskwilahan. Mm -hmm. no? Tapos yung, uh, ating, uh, yung mga BIF, kasi nilulusog na sila ng ating uh, sundalo, uh, mm -hmm. naghanap din sila ng advantage position, doon din sila napunta sa eskwilahan. Meanwhile, Captain Napoleon Alcarioto, spokesperson of the 602nd Infantry Brigade, confirms six casualties and eight wounded on the part of the BIFF and one fatality and two injuries on the military side. Alcarioto also clarifies that BIFF's raid in Pigkawayan is not linked to the ongoing crisis in the nearby Marawi City. Eh, magkaiba po ito ma'am kasi uh, ito kahit wala pa nung uh, Marawi ay uh, lagi na nila itong ginagawa. No? Uh, katulad nung sina uh, sinabi ko nga kanina na panggugulo, no? panggugulo at saka pagnanakaw yung kanilang uh, motibo. In line with this, PNP Chief Director General Ronald De La Rosa orders police in Mindanao to further intensify their monitoring and guarding of public areas. PNP PIO Chief Police Chief Superintendent Junardo Carlos says terrorist groups are conducting diversionary attacks to divert the attention of the military and police away from crisis in Marawi. The PNP Chief orders the strict monitoring of vital installations like power plants and water sources, police stations, and crowded areas. Paalala ng ating liderato, wag wag hayaang maka punta sa ibang lugar at doon gumawa ng ganitong mga uh, masasamang gawain. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The bakwit or evacuees of Marawi in an evacuation center in Baloy, Lanao del Norte are calling on the government to provide them with more tents. Robbie de Guzman explains why. A month after the crisis in Marawi City broke out, the current number of evacuees at an evacuation center in Balui, Lano del Norte, has already exceeded the capacity of the temporary shelter. The intense heat also causes evacuees, especially children, to get ill. This is why the Bakwits are asking the DSWD to make good in its promised tents. <laughs> About the space, uh, actually, ma'am, uh, sana po yung ano namin yung proposal ng nanawagan po ako sa central office ni Subuludi na sana na yung proposal nila na they will going to provide things for these IDPs since uh, this uh, gumampong uh, evacuation center is the most congested among evacuation centers in Baloi, the northern north. The evacuees are also asking for financial assistance. Nandiyan na yung pagkain nila, yung daily needs nila nandiyan. Pero minsan pagtanungin mo sila, kailangan nila ng pera. Yung pambili ng mga ayong gusto nila. Oo. <laughs> Kasi kung baga sa kanag na sila sa mga sa handgoods. Ngayon naglalakad ako dyan, 
Magingi sa akin ng kahit 100 pesos lang. Meanwhile, a widow has asked help from the government for the medical treatment of her child suffering from cerebral palsy. Gusto ko lang sabihin sa kanya na matulungan niya po sa mga okay ko ngayon. Lalo na kapag maula na itong gira. Oo. Tsaka gusto ko mapagamot ang anak ko. Baka, o, oh, baka sakaling makalakad siya. The Bakwits are first and foremost calling for the end of the crisis in Marawi City so they could return to their normal lives. Robby de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, prepares for the provision of temporary shelters for Marawi City residents. Meanwhile, the funds for Bangon, Marawi will come from the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR. Rosalie Cos explains why. Though the clearing operations of the government for Marawi City will take time, the Department of Social Welfare and Development has started preparing the provision of around 69,000 family-sized tents for the affected residents of Marawi crisis. DSWD Secretary Judy Tagiwalo said this is to address the need of the residents whose houses are destroyed because of the ongoing clashes. And we hope to provide individual tents per families. This is uh, this can be immediately used rather than the emergency shelter assistance, no, uh, where you have to wait for the validation, etc., before you can have it. Since day one of the clashes in Marawi City and up to now, DSWD has already provided 294 million pesos worth of non-food and food items for the affected residents. It has also been giving 1,000 pesos cash assistance for each family. This is aside from the 4,000 pesos cash assistance and food pack for them. Department of Budget and Management has released fund to DSWD amounting to 662.5 billion pesos as immediate assistance to internally displaced persons of Marawi crisis. Meanwhile, according to Malacanang, the fund for Bangon Marawi or rehabilitation of the city will come from the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCOR. President Rodrigo Duterte has mentioned that the government will allocate 2 billion pesos fund for the rehabilitation of Marawi City. But this I will promise you. I will set aside initially 20 billion para maumpisan yung mga mahirap ang unahin ko. Sec Jok now gave, uh, said that the first 10 billion would come from Pancor. We assume that the next 10 billion may also come from the same source. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Meanwhile, the government, in cooperation with a private company, has offered free mobile services in Marawi City beginning today. Grace Kasin tells us why. It has been a month since the clash in Marawi City erupted. Residents and soldiers have lost communications to their loved ones. To appease their worrying relatives, the government and one private company offered free and call tech services in Marawi City. The free domestic mobile service is open to all prepaid users in the area. This will uh, help a lot in boosting their uh, morale for them to be able to contact their uh, families because uh, as you all know, uh, they have been separated from their uh, families for a long time. They have suffered so much. Even our soldiers have suffered too much to the extent not only of risking their lives, but also sacrificing their lives for democracy for our people and country. Meanwhile, the telecommunications company says it is willing to cut its line of communication if it affects the ongoing military operations against the Maute terrorist group. That's when there's a security threat going on, okay. an operation may be upcoming, that's when they will inform us to shut it down for this period of time. The free call and text service will run up to 15 days or up to July 6. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. Elementary pupils in San Juan, Betis, Pampanga will be sending letters to the soldiers in Marawi City. Marge Pelayo tells us why. 
Students in San Miguel Elementary School in Betis, Pampanga, look up to the soldiers who courageously fight the Maute group in Marawi City in Mindanao. Because of this, all children in the school wrote letters manifesting their appreciation and how they are inspired by the soldiers. The school principal says the children know what is happening in Marawi and the sacrifices that the soldiers have to give, and this prompted them to write cards and letters. So, wala kaming pera na ibibigay. Parang yun lang, masaya na. Masasaya na yung mga sundalo. Kaya sabi ko, at least naman ka ako sa ganitong paraan. Parang pwede, pwede ko nang masabi na meron kaming naiambag. This letter writing project is a voluntary initiative of the students as their way to give tribute and salute the soldiers for their heroism. Ako po ay nagpapasalamat sa mga sandalo na nakikilaban sa mga Arabi. Para po hindi po sila malungkot, tsaka wala ma, para hindi po sila mawala ng pag-asa. Even the teachers themselves wrote letters to the soldiers. Nakapag-usapan namin kung magandang gumawa sila ng mga sulat para lang sa ganon, maibsan man lang yung kalungkutan nila. The students wish for the end of the conflict in Marawi so that the soldiers can go home to their families. The school targets to send the letters to Marawi tomorrow. Marge Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The National Capital Region Police Office meets with the Muslim leaders in Metro Manila on the issue of security. Rajel Adora will tell us why. NCRPO Chief Director Oscar Albayalde leads the dialogue with the Muslim leaders in Metro Manila. The meeting seeks to ensure that Metro Manila is safe from terrorism threats. Among the agreements done in the dialogue is the reporting of Muslim leaders to the proper authority of suspicious-looking new faces or newcomers in Muslim communities. Each community will also have registration and ID system and that only those who are law-abiding will be permitted in the neighborhood. Albayalde says this dialogue is a big help because the Datus or the leaders will be able to inform them of persons included in the terror list. Along with this, the NCRPO chief warns that they will hold accountable those Muslim leaders who will not be cooperating with them. If you are harboring a criminal, kasama po kayo sa kaso. Sabi nga ng mga leaders natin, identified nyo naman yung mga yung kung sino talaga ang matino at hindi matino dyan sa lugar ninyo. Huwag na nating pabayaan na mangyari yung nangyari sa Mindanao dito sa Metro Manila. During the meeting, some Darus and Muslim leaders could not contain themselves and vent out their despair as some of their friends and family members become involved in terrorism. Masakit man banggitin, laging problema tayo na ating mga kapulisan sa iba't ibang communities natin dito sa Metro Manila. Hindi ulingit sa ating kaalaman, na ay mga kapatid tayo imbul sa druga, imbul sa kung ano-ano mga criminalities. The Datus and Youth Muslim leaders promised their solid support to the authorities in maintaining peace and order in Metro Manila. Rujel Adora, UNDV News and Rescue, Philippines. Foreign ministers and security officials from Indonesia, Malaysia and the Philippines have gathered today for the trilateral meeting for security. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. High-ranking officials of the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia discussed today the necessary steps to strengthen their cooperation against terrorism and extremism. This meeting happens in the midst of terrorism threats in Mindanao, where Malta Group attacked Marawi City. According to the Indonesian and Malaysian officials who are now in the country, it is high time to strengthen the cooperation of the three countries in fighting terrorism. Ladies and gentlemen, no country is immune from threat of terrorism. This threat is beyond border. And we need to find new approaches and in an age where when they're always proving and educate to, to the dangerous challenges that we face today. Uh, we are a world of nation states, but new conflicts and threats imperiling our peace and security does not recognize borders. Some non-state actors, such as the so-called Islamic State, have shown that they possess the capacity to destroy the sovereign states. In a joint statement, some framework agreements were discussed. This includes strengthening the efforts of countries to resolve the root causes of extremism, like poverty, social injustice, and illegal drugs, as well as the sharing of intelligence and information of the three countries. Of course, no, we, we discussed the different nationalities uh, 
involved and we discuss also how to keep them out of Southeast Asia and how to keep them out of our countries but also how to handle our, our, our own situations so that they will not cross borders. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Malacanang has confirmed the telephone conversation between President Rodrigo Duterte and Indonesian President Joko Widodo. President Widodo initiated to call President Duterte at around 7.30 last night. The two discussed measures in enhancing cooperation of the Philippines and Indonesia against terrorism and extremism. The meeting also aimed at fostering cooperation on countering terrorism among regional neighboring states. And uh, President Widodo reaffirmed Indonesia's commitment to support the Philippines in countering terrorism, including restoring peace and stability in the southern Philippines. Next on Y News. The government hopes air pollution level in the country will decline with the signing of the new regulation on firecrackers. The court orders the transfer of detention to the prime suspect in the killing of Bien Unido Mayor Gisela Boniel. And election watchdog seeks to have Smartmatic blacklisted due to alleged poll system anomaly in the 2016 national elections. Why News will be right back. A group of firecracker manufacturers and dealers in Bulacan seeks for a dialogue with the administration after President Rodrigo Duterte signed the executive order that regulates the use of pyrotechnic products. Victor Cosare tells us why. The Philippine Pyrotechnic Manufacturers and Dealers Association Incorporated, or PPMDAI, opposes President Rodrigo Duterte's executive order that regulates and controls the use of firecrackers. PPMDAI Vice President Leia Alapide says the EO will result in fewer buyers of their products, which in turn will have a negative effect on the revenue of firecracker manufacturers and dealers in Bukawe, Bulacan. The EO states that only community fireworks display shall be allowed. The group fears this would mean that pyrotechnics display will be prohibited in every home. This prompted Alapide to seek for a dialogue with the government to discuss some pyrotechnic products that are safe even inside or just outside the house. Sana po yung hanay ng industriya ay makonsulta rin para po maipaliwanag din namin yung mga iba-ibang produkto na pwede naman pong masindihan sa mga maliliit na lugar na hindi na po kinakailangan yung masyadong maluluwang na lugar. However, Bukawi residents have differing reaction on this matter. Pabor ako doon sa community base sa isang barangay kaysa yung bahay-bahay na nagpapaputok. Karamihan ang nagkakasunog, may nadidisgrasya kasi hindi kontrolado yung pagbibili ng paputok. Pag minsan may malalakas. Gusto, gusto sa bahay na lang po. Sa harap ng bahay para hindi na lalabas sa dandan Para ano sir, pang sariling gamit. Based on the EO, a community fireworks display is considered permissible if it is a part of an occasion, celebration, competition, and other similar events. If this will be done under the supervision of experts who are duly licensed by the PNP, and if this has an approval or endorsement of the local government unit where the display will be held. Victor Josare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Environment and Health Departments are both positive that the recently signed regulation on firecracker use will help in the government's campaign against air pollution. Ray Palayo explains why. In the coming new year, reduction in the amount of air pollution caused by firecrackers will be measured once the Executive Order No. 28 is implemented, regulating the use of firecrackers. The Department of Health and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources believe that the measure will minimize health risks, especially to those with respiratory problems. Kung mababawasan ang nagpapaputok, 
gumagamit ng fireworks during New Year's, mababawasan po yung pollution natin. In the beginning of 2017, DNR observed about 50% decline in air pollution level caused by firecrackers due to rain. As observed, pollution level during the celebration of New Year accelerates five times the normal days. On the firecrackers, yes. Kasi based sa aming uh, monitoring data, yung tinatawag natin PM10 2.5, Starting mga allergies na ng 31, umaakyat na yan. Still, motor vehicles mainly contribute to air pollution which comprises 80%. Nevertheless, according to DENR, pollution level has been declining because motor vehicles started to use unleaded gasoline and diesel. DENR adds that improvements in air quality would be faster if increase in the volume of vehicles is regulated. DNR says around 2 million vehicles have been added on the road from 2010 to 2014. Cleaner fuel, cleaner engine, kasi we shifted from pre-Euro, Euro 1, and then under the Clean Air Act, Euro 2, and then we further improved it to Euro 4. The World Health Organization said around 7 million people die every year due to air pollution. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, confiscated several electronic parts being sold at a hardware store in Mandaluyong City. Joanano explains why. Personnel of the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, conducted an inspection of several hardware stores in Mandaluyong City earlier. This is to determine if the products they sell follow required product standards. The DTI visited three hardware stores, one of which was found selling light switches without product standard markings. Under the law, product standard markings serves as the indication for consumers to determine if the product they would buy passes the examination of the Philippine National Standard. A locally made product should bear such marking, while imported one should have import commodity clearance or ICC sticker. DTI explains products like home appliances, electrical and wiring devices, building and construction materials, as well as chemical and consumer products should undergo and pass the government's product certification scheme. In actually, ito na siya ay uh, safe siya inter, uh, and at the same time, in terms of quality, maganda yung quality, kalidad na ang produkto. The DTI confiscated the products without standard markings and issued notice of violation to the hardware store. The supervisor of the store, meanwhile, says they are not aware the products they are selling have no PS markings. Matagal na matagal na po yung stock na yan na galing po sa kabilang kanto na nagsara. Tapos po yun, napunta po sa amin. Siguro mga 80s pa po yan. Ay yan naman po, ilang piraso lang po yun. The DTI will summon the owner of the store within 48 hours to explain the sale of products without PS markings. Should the owner is found to have violated the law, the establishment will face a fine of not lower than 17,500 pesos. DTI visited next two huge hardware stores but saw no violations committed. Before kasi kami magpasok ng item dito, is dumadaan siya sa merchandising department na sila mismo yung nag inspect before siya ipasok sa store. Then uh, meron naman kasi sila mga... Uh, mga Kung baga may ini-inspect na sila sa item or meron silang mga uh, kalidad na kailangan na sa item before siya ipasok sa store. So hindi naman kami yung uh, pasok lang na pasok ng item sa store, porket na alam namin is for selling siya, uh, inaano din namin na dapat ano siya, dumadaan din siya sa tamang proseso. The DTI reminds consumers that they may return the product they bought without PS markings to the seller. If the seller refuses to replace it, consumers may seek the help of the DTI. The DTI says it will now regularly make rounds at various establishments across the country to ensure and teach businessmen the proper selling of products according to law, which aims to protect the rights of consumers. Joan Nano, UNCV News and Rescue, Mandaluyong City. In other news, the Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, today filed before the Department of Justice tax evasion complaints worth over 275 million pesos against four companies. Among those charged were GMC Corporate Construction and Development Corporation of Cabuyao, Laguna, Marina Seafoods of Taguig, and Armel Plastic Company and SKI Construction, both from Makati City. BIR says the companies failed to settle their income and value-added taxes, prompting the agency to sue them under the government's run-after-tax evaders or rate program.
The National Privacy Commission believes that the glitches that happened in the BPI banking system is a case of internal breach. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. The House of Representatives has conducted its own hearing today over the glitches in the banking system of BPI and BDO Unibank following the Senate's own inquiry yesterday. While they already fixed the glitches, BPI President Cesar Consing says millions were mistakenly withdrawn from the accounts of their clients after a human error interrupted their system. Mistakenly withdrawn uh, from BPI totaled 46 million pesos. There were mispostings. And because there were mispostings, uh, there were there was an amount uh, that, in some cases, were mistakenly withdrawn. Withdrawn. Despite the problems, BPI guarantees that the system they are using is still safe. Magkakataon din po talaga na mayon magkakamale. Combination of process, technology, and people. Normally, people magkakamale po. Ang importante mayon kang safeguards sa system mo na pwede mo recover. And I can assure you, sa BPI, we have a resilient infrastructure. National Privacy Commission, or NPC, says while BPI denies a data breach, they believe otherwise. They say the availability and confidentiality of bank information of BPI clients have been compromised. When you say that a certain data processing system, like the ATM system, or an electronic banking channel system, becomes unavailable to an individual or there are unauthorized changes such as the mispost, mispostings, then definitely this is a breach. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas meanwhile says the BPI case is an isolated one and there are no evidence proving that it's a case of hacking. Despite this, the BSP and the NPC are conducting separate investigations. NPC is also checking for the BPI's compliance to protocols. Meanwhile, the BDO Unibank is now considering modernizing their ATM cards to prevent cases of skimming, which happened to seven of their ATM machines recently. The industry, with the work, with the help of the BSP, is taking the next step, next precautionary measure. Yung punti natawag na. EMV. Ito po kasi yung nababasa. Yung EMV, lalagyan na nito. Which is more difficult to read at saka meron po mga security measure yan. The Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT has suggested to banks the use of other security features that can be added to the ATM such as fingerprint technology and heat signatures. Joyce Balancho, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. A court in Bohol has ordered the transfer of the prime suspect in the killing of Bien Unido Mayor Gisela Buñel to another detention facility. Victor Cosare tells us why. Talibong Regional Trial Court, Branch 52, Judge Marivic Trabajo Daray orders the transfer of Nino Ray Boniel to Bohol Jail. This afternoon, Nino Boniel's lawyer served the commitment order at the police station 2 in Cebu City. The order came a day after the filing yesterday of kidnapping and serious illegal detention charges against the board member. The charges are filed by a close friend of the victim, Bien Unido Mayor Gisela Boniel. Uh, Planning request for preliminary investigation and, and waiver for detention ni uh, provincial board member Boniel. Kaya ginahan mi nga uh, mapaspasan, magbista mi dito o gamay bawaan yun nato ang mga, uh, mga testimony. Aside from this, board member Boniel and his co-accused are also facing parricide charges. In the same manner din he, musubmit sa mi o uh, counter affidavit by uh, tomorrow, no, sa kaso sa Lapu-Lapu, we wanted it uh, fast track. Okay, I think uh, people wanted to know uh, bahin uh, unsa gyo uh, mga testigo, no. So we would really wanted this uh, fast track aron mahumanta, no, and uh, this can uh, be placed uh, into. Authorities are still searching for the remains of the mayor, which was allegedly thrown into the waters of the Kaubian Island in Lapu-Lapu City, Cebu. In line with this, the Police Regional Office 7 assures that there will be no special treatment of Boniel, although he will be transferred to Bohol. The police have only 72 hours to transfer the accused to the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology in Bohol. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. 
Senator Antonio Trillanes IV claimed Superintendent Marvin Marcos and his men were members of the Davao Death Squad being protected by President Rodrigo Duterte. Nel Marie Buhok tells us why. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV says he is no longer surprised by the move of the Department of Justice to downgrade the case filed against Superintendent Marvin Marcos from murder to homicide. Marcos and his men are accused for the killing of Albuera, late Mayor Rolando Espinosa, last November 2016. The senator says what the DOJ did is part of the Duterte administration's effort to save Marcos and his men, who Trillanes claims were members of the Davao Death Squad. Hindi niya pwedeng hayaan na makulong lang itong grupo nila, Superintendent Marcos, eh. Dahil pagka ito nakulong, mawawala ng visa yung kanyang um, statement na sagot ko kayo. Trillanes also claims that based on the information he received, some members of the PNPA Class 96 are part of the death squad. Base sa nakalap namin na informasyon, uh, merong... Isang klase sa PNPA na nagpapasimuno uh, nitong mga uh, aktibidades na ito. The senator says despite the lack of strong evidence for his allegations, he is hoping that the involved cops will soon speak against the president. On the other hand, Malacanang has this to say about the senator's allegations. With the interview that he did with BBC, when he said that uh, the senator seemed to be out of tune and not reflective of the times. It seems to be really given to this huge fantasy scene. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The trial of former Senator Bong Revilla has formally started today. However, the former senator was a no-show in today's trial. Monoxon tells us why. According to the lawyers of former Senator Bong Revilla, their client was not able to attend the trial today of his plunder case because Revilla was confined yesterday in the hospital due to high blood pressure. Revilla is expected to be discharged today. Nonetheless, the proceedings went as scheduled. The chief administrator of the records division of the Department of Budget and Management was the first to take the witness stand. Specifically, the prosecution presented to the witness the Special Allotment Release Order or SARO of Revilla, which the latter confirmed as authentic. Next was the supervising administrative officer of the Department of Agriculture, who also confirmed the SARO was authentic. The last witness who took the stand was the Chief Treasury Operation Officer of the Bureau of Treasury. The defense lawyer for Senator Revilla cross-examines the official and proves that no such money from the PDAF was received by Revilla. It's up to them to prove that they, indeed there was something that was received. And uh, as, as of now, of course, there have only, what, three witnesses uh, thus far. There is nothing to show that uh, the good senator received anything from the government. But according to the prosecution... No, that, that is different. That, the two things are different. He requested it to be released. Of course, yung witness will not know whether the, the uh, amount, any amount of that went to Senator De Villa. Hindi nila malalaman yun. But the fact is, ni-request niya yun, ni-release niya yun. So ang nag-trigger nun, si Senator De Villa. The prosecution already presented three witnesses out of the 50 from their side, while the defense is preparing 69 witnesses for the plunder trial. The court schedules the next hearing on June 29. The prosecution is set to present as witness the investigator of the fact-finding on Revilla's case and some beneficiaries of Revilla's PDAF. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Sandigan Bayan. Meanwhile, a group of election watchdogs insist anew that the country's automated election system is highly questionable. Aiko Miguel explains why. Some poll watchdogs insist on the absence of a source code review as the reason why it was not immediately determined whether the automated election machines were able to correctly read and count votes. The Q server, the transparency server, and the central server are also malinis. No one can answer that, even Comelec. Can you give me an assurance, a guarantee that all these four servers are clean? 
No, because nobody was able to look at them. Aside from the dubious machines, the group claims that they already noticed some anomalies even at the bidding process, as almost all contracts were granted to Smartmatic, which the Comelec has commissioned automated election system provider in the last three national elections. Adding to this is the reported script change or the intervention of the Comelec in the program in the transparency server during the counting of votes and the so-called Comelec or hacking in the server which has the information of the voters. This prompted the group to appeal for the blacklisting of Smartmatic to prevent it from participating in the coming elections. We want to blacklist, let's say, Smartmatic from participating. But... Remember that Comelec already has bought several machines. So we're not saying wag na ninyong gamitin. Gamitin ninyo pero sumunod kayo sa batas. The group reiterates that they also have witnesses that they are ready to bring forward in the Congress hearings to prove their claim. The Commission on Elections, however, dares the group to submit a formal complaint and show evidence. Show the evidence. Prove your case. And that is going to be done not in a press con but in the court. If he has witnesses, show show the witnesses. You know, bring them to, to the proper forum. The Comelec maintains that the bidding process was done in orderly manner and there is no truth that there was an anomaly in the voters' list because of the Comelec. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Embassy of the United States in the Philippines will be closed on Monday, June 26. This is in observance of the Eid al-Fitr or the end of Ramadan of Muslims. U.S. Embassy operations will resume the next day, June 27. Meanwhile, Malacanang declared June 26 as a regular holiday. Both the PNP responders and DOJ justice boosters prepare for a clash on Sunday as the UN TV Cup off-season game semifinals kick off. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. The PNP responders hold a twice debate advantage over its opponent on Sunday, the DOJ Justice Boosters. With eyes on the title at the UN TV Cup executive face-off, the policemen do not discount the threat posed by the boosters. Kailangan practice siguro ng uh, maayos, no? Uh, Papractice kami the whole week. And uh, of course, rest kami the night, the day before. So kailangan na uh, matalo namin ang uh, DOJ. The responders are determined to put an end to the DOJ's campaign in the league using the tactics that made them win before. Mas mabilis yung DOJ. So magpe-prepare kami na mas, ma mas dapat na mas mabilis kami sa kanila. At the same time, mag-iensayo kami na as a team para mas maganda yung pasahan namin, mas madali, na, madali kami makakonvert. On the other hand, the DOJ Justice Boosters are positive in their journey towards the final round. Makapasok kami sa semis, uh, sobrang saya ng team. So siguro mas ma-inspired silang mag-insayo. O hopefully pala rin kami, makalusot kami ng semis, tapos championship. So siguro, gagawa siguro kami ng mga bagong simple play lang. As it is their first time in the semifinals, the DOJ team plans on something bigger and hopes for a complete lineup to beat the responders. Si Gaurano, na injured siya, nakapilok, so hindi siya nakalaro ng yung laban namin. No. Tapos si Garbida, medyo may isa dali rin naman. Tapos si Aldubino, yung kahit medyo may niinda rin eh. Hopefully kaya, oh. uh, sabi ko naman sa kanila, unting tiis na lang. Pahinga, tapos ayusin lang namin yung depensa namin, siguro magpe-prepare na kami na maayos. If the boosters win, they will face the responders in another match. But if the responders wins, the DOJ exits the league and the PNP will advance to the final round waiting for the winner in the AFP Judiciary Clash. Watch the heart-pounding UN TV Cup executive face-off semi-final round that kicks off on June 25 at Pasig City Sports Center to be aired live on UN TV with live streaming via UNTVweb.com. Bernard Dottis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Those are the reasons behind the news, June 22, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching My News.